Ellie, how was your day? Good. I don't like the seat like this. Oh, you want to unrecline? Okay. Well, that makes it better for you anyway. Makes it easier for you to do your homework because there's the desk right here. I don't have any homework, Daddy. Well, at least you can get yourself a drink, huh? Yeah? I don't like Gatorade, Daddy. So the kids absolutely love this car, and I do too. I've heard that song enough times. This is where the partition comes in very, very handy. <laughs> they can make as much noise as they want, scream, cry, do whatever, and I'm totally, oh. That's right, I showed her the intercom. Oh, hello. I forgot to mention, I bought the world's cheapest Mybox 62 as well, with the partition. Hoovies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is my latest auction purchase, one of the other cars that I purchased at the Barrett Jackson Houston auction, and it is a 2004 Maybach 62 with the very rare partition. Now, I know you come to Hoovies Garage mostly for towing advice, according to Alex Jones, but in addition, you come here for the best car consumer advice on the internet. And if you have a family of four like me and you're shopping for a new or slightly used car, buying a Cadillac Escalade for $100,000, so don't be silly. A Lincoln Navigator? Well, certainly not as well. You are spending way, way too much money because this Maybach behind me is much cheaper and better. Even in the minivan segments, the Chrysler Pacifica Limited, the Toyota Sienna, or the Honda Odyssey, over $50,000. That is absurd. You can buy a Maybach 62 for that money as I have just proven. This car was over $500,000 new and I bought it for $40,000 at auction or $44,000 with fees and you get so much car. It is literally perfect for every single occasion and today I am going to prove it. And yes, you did hear me right. This car cost more than an SLR McLaren new. This was the most expensive Mercedes in their lineup in 2004 at over $500,000. And yes, it depreciated over 90% off of its MSRP, but I did get an exceptional deal. It was towards the end of Saturday at Barrett Jackson. I saw this car earlier, was interested in it, and then it went across the block, the last four or five cars of the day, and it struggled to get out of the 30s, which was absurdly cheap. I was about 50 yards away from the auction block, but I ran as fast as I could to get to this car in time. Parts flying off of me that I need to talk on television, but we were almost out of TV coverage then. Got there in time, out of breath, put my hand up, one bid, $40,000 and I bought the cheapest Maybox 62 probably ever in the world, especially with the partition. Now, Mercedes expected to sell about 2,000 of these a year. They ended up selling about 2,000 total, I believe, an entire Maybox, the 57 and the 62. Now, a few years ago, I had the 57 project you all saw that was can opened by a truck. That car, unfortunately, it didn't end well because I could never get a title for it because I lost the paperwork, dummy me. So it's actually been sold off for salvage despite all of that work. But now I get a do-over with the king daddy of these, the Maybach 62, which is the longer wheelbase, and I mean way, way longer, and you get way more technology. So I'm gonna give you a tour of all these incredible things in a little bit, but when you go through them, keep in mind how perfect this car is for hauling around children, which is also what I'm going to do today. We're a few hours out from picking up the kids at school. They've had a few days of a school run in this car, and so far it's working out absolutely fabulously. Every single home in the US needs one of these in their garage, and at $44,000 with fees, which is way less than the average cost of a new car nowadays, well, there's really no excuse. I mean, look at it. 
Now, certainly this car's failure for Mercedes certainly did tarnish the Maybach here when it comes to depreciation, but not as much as you would think in comparison to the Rolls-Royce, which was three times more successful in terms of sales. The Phantom has depreciated on a similar scale, but the biggest criticism of this Maybach was the fact that it looked too much like a Mercedes S-Class, which cost, well, a tenth of the price, even though it shares none of the body panels, not really anything other than a few electronics inside as the S-Class. This was actually developed on the previous S-Class chassis, the 140. That Mercedes spent over a billion dollars engineering, and there's some remnants of that because this car was developed in the late 90s. They unveiled it at an auto show as an experiment. It was a huge hit, so they decided to put it in production, and well, it was a massive failure because the S-Class, well, it did look a lot like it. But the 62 certainly differentiates itself in the massive size of this thing. This car is longer than most Suburbans, Ford Excursions, I believe, just about any full-size SUV, and it really becomes apparent when you look inside the back, not the front. And with that, let's start the tour. My bucka 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 My bucka bucka. I mean, it is just absolutely ginormous. But like the 57, there is a lot of differences between a normal S-Class, including the light bar here on the back, which is pretty ahead of its time. We're seeing more and more of that in recent years with automakers. But this one, it's not a black car. It's actually a basalt black, which is sort of a dark gray. Very, very pretty color. Now, one of the most expensive options in the 62 is the rear panoramic roof, which this one has, which also has the solar roof that runs the accessories when the car is off. Well, I think just the fan to keep the cabin cool. So it has that about $50,000 option right there, the cool roof, which I'll show you in a little bit. But everything about this car quality-wise is off the charts. You see the headlights and how ornate they are. Absolutely insane for a car built in 2004. People complained about the 2000s S-Class looking cheap with a lot of plastics. Well, they did not do it here. And this one is in really good shape. There is one little ding in the hood there, a few scratches, a little bit of chipping here on the side mirror, but it's pretty impressive considering this car has over 100,000 miles, which is pretty unheard of for one of these. So I'm gonna actually use this car as intended. And since I bought it at auction, I didn't get to meet the previous owner. He had it for over 10 years, but from what I could look up, up. He owned a chain of liquor stores and grocery stores in Houston, and I guess he didn't want to drive himself around to visit all these stores. Maybe he wanted to sample the merchandise, so he was driven in this incredible thing, which we might as well start with being driven in it. You can see in the back, I have my kid's car seat in here, and actually they do have car seat anchors if you choose to use that. So it really is built to haul children. Forget dictators, captains of industry, billionaires. This is perfect for your family once they've depreciated to the levels that this car is at. And Bach here, a child would be endlessly entertained, starting with being able to close your own door with this button right here. Pull this down, all a Rolls Royce. It closes itself. I mean, it is a very long way to reach out to grab that handle, so I get for sure why that was needed. In addition, this car has endless amount of storage for your Maybach branded headphones or books, if you will, in a few places. But this car really comes alive when you turn it on, but sadly you can't do that. It's about the only thing you can't do from the back is drive this thing and turn it on. So let's do that first. The front seat is about the funniest thing about this Maybach because when you get in, I'm a six foot two tall guy and my knee is right up against the dashboard. I can't bring it back any further because of the partition. You have so much room back here, but no room for the driver because, well, they didn't pay over half a million dollars for this car, obviously. The person in the back paid for it. Well, that's the first owner. Flash forward 17 years and I'm buying it to haul my kids to school. But you still have a lot of the comforts. Endless adjustment here in the seats. They're heated and they're cooled. You also have a pulse massager for yourself. All of the air bladders like an S-Class. And then you fire it up and it is a fantastic quiet engine. Well, should be quiet the twin turbo V12, just like an S600, 550 horsepower in this thing. So really more like an S65. And you can hear, well, some accessory or idler definitely has a bearing that's on its way out because it shouldn't be this noisy, but probably an easy fix there. That's the only thing showing this car's age or miles, 100,000 miles. Otherwise, it's not leaking or showing any issues. Everything works, which is absolutely astounding because 
there's a lot. Let's go back up front here and you can see the multimedia system, dual zone climate control, special font for it being a Maybach in the cluster and no normal plastic buttons here. This one, it's wood plastic buttons. So everything is special on this car. Even the cup holders are kind of ridiculous. It needs a little extra help, but yeah, that is your cup holder. This ornate piece of sculpture here, which is once again, absolutely ridiculous. Two of them. And then over here is your phone slot, which can't open normally. It has to come out fancifully. It needed a little help, obviously, but then you push the button, it all goes away. And look at this beautiful three layer wood here. Same as the 57. I love that on my car. It's same in the 62. The leather is much more soft and supple in the Maybach as well. And the dash is all leather. The headliner suede. Obviously this is where the solar panel is. So no sunroof for the front. It's all in the back, which now that the car is alive, we need to go back there and rest in the lap of luxury. Another thing worth noting is these doors open up almost 90 degrees on their own. And considering how massive they are, look how far away I am. It takes up basically an entire parking space on its own. But then you get in, which once again, why close the doors yourself when you have the power operated assist? A little slower than the Phantom, but still really, really nice. This one touch of the button turns your seat into the finest of what any airline would offer in first class as we go back in the Bach. A full recline here, which now explains why the partition is so far forward, cramping up the driver somewhat because I am comfortable in this thing at over six foot tall in a full recline. And now I want full privacy, which is why all of these buttons exist. This one to hide me from the world from the side and this one to hide me from the world from the back, along with the other side there, all of them going. I can even hide myself from the driver in a multitude of ways, starting with the glass here. That is a window. But now the driver, if I speak quietly, can't hear what I'm saying, but now let's max out the privacy here. Complete sensory deprivation tank other than the roof, which is currently translucent. That's what this button does. It changes it from translucent to transparent. Now there's my garage fan and lighting is a lot more visible. Polarization though will play tricks with the camera, but I can see out very clearly. Then I can make it translucent again. And then I can also close it and basically have a dark cabin so I can take a nap in the middle of the day if I want. It also enables you to have no glare on the multimedia system, which I'll open things back up just so you can see me. It is getting a little dark in here. All of it coming back alive. Absolutely ridiculous. And then you can see back here, that is the original Motorola phone. Whatever generation this flip phone was called after the StarTech, and it still has its new wrapping. So basically it was never used, which is absolutely hilarious. But your multimedia system is back here, the DVD player, along with your CD changer. And this one, well, that's just a cabin for all of your snacks. I've got kids' pouches and things in here. The remote is really what controls all the stuff. Well, that's all loading up. The climate control is pretty cool in this thing. You have your own controls in the back, a lot of vents, so you're not deprived of anything. Ah, oh, it's come alive now. This may not be for the kids. It's actually for me when I hang out here, which is quite frequent looks like it is the Enterprise incident playing right now. But in addition to playing DVDs, you also have the tilt function. So it can pop out a little bit, get you the right angle to make sure you don't have any glare on the screen. And also one more thing to look at back here are these gauges, which includes the speedometer, how fast the car is going, your time, and how hot or cold it is outside. So you can backseat drive. And if you don't want to put your partition down, you can actually alert the driver they're going too fast with this intercom system. Hit the button. And now you are talking to the driver who can also talk back to you, but if they're gonna call you from the front, you actually have to accept the call. One thing I'm noticing as well is when you're in conference mode, it pauses your DVD. You turn it off and it plays again. This car is genius. You can also control all of this from the front as well, depriving your children just like modern multimedia systems. So this thing is absolutely insanely awesome. By 2004 standards, this was the Starship Enterprise. And even today, it is really, really advanced and a fantastic driving experience, which we shall do now as it's time to pick up the kids from school.
Now I know what you're thinking, the Mybox 62 can't do everything, it can't do burnouts, right? Well... Well, you betcha, even though I did need a little bit of help with some wet roads or a little bit of dirt and gravel on the roadside, <laughs> but the 550 horsepower V12 is more than up for the challenge, but then the massive brakes are another thing to overcome. This car has dual caliper brakes, which are just absolutely insanely huge to stop this very, very big car. So, ooh, yep, there are, there are good brakes. She <laughs> just turned my pulse massagers on. Oh, 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 yeah. So you get supercar performance and supercar braking with this gigantic machine. And the air suspension does have active dampening that you can turn up that uh, does tighten up the handling some. But, oh, the massagers getting me really good there. Uh, but, yeah, luxury is the name of the game with this car. Let's put it back into full comfort mode. Turn the nannies back on. This car is so so nice the windows are double insulated like the old mercedes s-class so you have basically double pane windows that are about this thick insulating you from the outside world the v12 with the turbos is so whisper quiet as well i mean listen you can't hear anything can you just absolutely wild the ride is absolutely sublime and though i do wish i had a little bit more room in the front it's still supremely comfortable now here's the highway look at this effortless effortless and now we're going illegal speeds i mean it's just wildly fast as well but so effortless you have no idea how fast you're going until you look at the speedometer so this car really does hit all of the buttons value obviously forty thousand dollars very reasonable for a car like this performance 550 horsepower with incredible braking as well luxury i mean obviously and now practicality this car is as good as any family suv and my kids have been using it for a few days with the school run so far they love it so let's grab the children to prove my point Ellie, how was your day? Good. I like this car more than the one that has the hole in it. Oh, you're talking about the other Maybach? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the seat like this. Oh, you want to unrecline? Okay. Well, that makes it better for you anyway. Makes it easier for you to do your homework. Because there's the desk right here. I don't have any homework, Daddy. You, you don't have any homework? Well, at least you can get yourself a drink, huh? Yeah? I don't like Gatorade, Daddy. She's becoming more and more like the Maybach first owner every day. Uh, sorry, I didn't get you juice. Um, okay, how about... I'd rather have the milk. Yeah, that's for your brother. Okay, snacks are in here. I want that. Well, enjoy your meal, miss. I need to go back up front so we can get your brother. Did you have fun at school? Yeah. Do you want some milk? Okay. Yeah, we got your milk right here. So the kids absolutely love this car, and I do too. I've heard that song enough times. This is where the partition comes in very, very handy. <laughs> they can make as much noise as they want, scream, cry, do whatever, and I'm totally, oh. That's right, I showed her the intercom. Thank you for watching. Hang up on her. Ellie, you do have some homework. You have your spelling boards you need to do, some math you need to make up, right? Be quiet. Hey, no. Be quiet. I know you have homework. The partition isn't going to get you out of homework. I'm being locked out. She's not answering. We'll get home eventually.